Welcome to the testing world. In this session, we are going to set up environment for Ruby programming language. So these are the four softwares that we need to install. First is Ruby, which is the programming language. Next is we want editor. Editor means where we are going to write Ruby code. So if we use Notepad as a editor, then we don't need to go for the rest of the three components. But disadvantage to write code on the Notepad is that we are not going to get any help. Uh, like IntelliSense, it will be difficult to debugging. So if we want to write code in the Notepad, then we don't need to go for other components. But for this session, for this complete course, we are going to use Eclipse for writing code. Java is the prerequisite for Eclipse so because we want to install Eclipse and want to write Ruby code on there That's why we need to set a prerequisite first. So that's the prerequisite Java is the prerequisite for the Eclipse So first of all we need Ruby then we are going to install Java which is a prerequisite for the Eclipse After that once we complete the Eclipse installation we need a Ruby plugin on the Eclipse because by default Eclipse is coming for Java programming language but if you want to write Ruby code on Eclipse then we need Ruby plugin. First I'm going to check how we can set up Ruby in our system. So before moving to that first we need to check do we have Ruby by default installed or not. So go to the command prompt and just write ruby space hyphen v. It's going to show version but here it does not show the version means in my system we don't have a ruby. So go to google download ruby for windows. So we are going to set up this on the windows. Download ruby installer and here we are getting the different installers. We have the later installer which is 2.3.0 before then 2.2.4 but they are asking like here if we go for the latest installer for the 2.2.x or upper version many gems, gems we can understand is like a library. Many libraries are not compatible with that. So best practice is to go to a previous stable installer that which is 2.0.0. So I'm just downloading 2.0.0 as a Ruby installer for me. It is a small file of around 16.9 MB. So once it will download, we will start installation. So once it is done, just click on this installer and run it. Here accept license, next, it's a very straightforward process. So we are just following like next and install. And here we see Ruby is installed successfully. So now check it again, like do we have Ruby installed or not? So go to the command prompt, Ruby hyphen V. Here we see we have installed Ruby but it is still does not display Ruby version. Now we have to set up environment variable. To set up environment variable I'm just closing command prompt. Go to the location where Ruby is installed. So in my system I have Ruby in C drive and that's Ruby. I just go to the folder, go to the bin folder, copy the path of this bin folder and to set up environment variable, go to the my computer, right click, properties. Here we are going to get advanced system settings, environment variable. Here inside the system variable, search for a path variable. So that's my path variable. Click on edit. Go to the start of this variable value. So I'm just pressing home button and I'm on the starting phase. Paste the path which you copied for Ruby till bin and then write semicolon. So here we can see that is the path which I pasted 
and at the end I have written semicolon. Semicolon means we have separated previously exist path with new path. Just click on OK. OK. So everything is done. Moving to command prompt again and just Ruby space hyphen V. And here we can see it display version. If it's displaying version means Ruby installed successfully. And now we are ready to move to the other components. So moving to this and we have already set up Ruby. If you want to use notepad as the editor, then we need not to go for other options, other softwares means our environment is ready. So that's all we have for the session in which we have installed Ruby and we by default have notepad. So once setup environment is ready, but in the next lecture, we are going to show how we can set up the next environment. So that's all we have for this session. Thanks for watching this video. Welcome to the testing world. In previous session, we have already seen how we can set up Ruby programming language. And we by default getting notepad on the Windows machine. So one environment was ready for programming. But for this course, we are going to use Eclipse as the editor for the Ruby. Because of that, we are going to set up these three softwares. So Eclipse prerequisite is Java. We should have Java in our system before moving to the Eclipse. To set up Java, go to Google, download JDK. So first we need to install JDK. Okay, we are getting this Oracle website. So I click on this. Click on Java. Here we need to accept license and then Java for 32 bit or 64 bit. So it's up to us what kind of system we are having. My system is 64 bit system. So I'm clicking on this 64 exe. It will start downloading. Once it will download, I'm canceling it because I already have. Once it is download, move to the location where it is downloaded. So here we can see we have a downloaded exe file. Just double click on this and run. So it will start installation of the JDK. It's a very simple process, a straightforward process. We are going to perform just next, next, next process. So because I already have Java on my system, so it is asking, do you want to reinstall it? I'm saying no, I don't want to reinstall it because I already have, but you need to just go for next, next, next and finish the process. And it will install successfully. So once you install JDK, we just need to check command prompt Java space hyphen version. So it will show version. If it is showing the version, that means you have installed Java successfully. So that is the first software we need to set up, which is Java to work on Eclipse prerequisite to set up Java. We have already set up that. So now moving to the Eclipse, go to the Google again, download Eclipse. Here we are getting Eclipse download again, 32 or 64 bit system. So my system is 64 bit. And here download, it will download an installer. Once it will download the installer, we just need to run the installer. I have already downloaded it, so I'm just clicking on this installer. Here click on run, run, and it will start Eclipse installation process. Again, I have an Eclipse on my system, so it's a very straightforward process in which just next, next, next and finish. I'm going to cancel it because I already have. And once you installed it, I'll show you. So here we need to select Eclipse ID for the Java 
developers or maybe java ee developers it up to you we can select it's for java ee developers and now it's a very simple process just to next next and finish i'm going to cancel it i'm not going to install it because i already have that so i close this and i'm going to show you how it looks like once installed so i'm coming to the desktop and that's the desktop icon we are getting so once you install eclipse we are going to get this icon just click on this now my eclipse is starting so uh, we have seen how we can set up java and here we set up jdk and we set up eclipse eclipse mars is the version we have set up so now step 2 is done step 3 is done we need to set up a ruby plugin by default eclipse is coming for java programming if we want to write ruby coding on eclipse we need to install ruby plugin on the eclipse so to install ruby plugin first we need to start eclipse so here we can see my eclipse has started and once the you know eclipse has started we need to set up ruby plugin for that we should have internet connection the steps to install ruby plugin is to help eclipse marketplace it is going to display all the plugins which we can install with eclipse we need to go for the ruby plugin only so here we can write ruby because i need ruby plugin and it is searching for the ruby plugin only out of the total plugins so once you get this ruby dltk means dynamic language toolkit we just need to click install and it will start installation of ruby plugin so here we are getting this by default selected options just click on confirm and it is moving to next option so it's going to download many files i accept the license click on finish it will take some time to download all these files so in the meantime i'm going to pause this process so once it is done it will ask for eclipse restart just click on yes eclipse will be restarted so eclipse is restarted go to file new others and here we are getting ruby option means ruby plugin installed successfully we have set up ruby plugin on the eclipse now only one step is pending we have to configure ruby here in this eclipse so go to windows preferences we are going to get option of the ruby over here ruby interpreter and here we need to select the interpreter interpreter means ruby exe file so just click on the browse and we have installed ruby on c drive ruby bin and that's it ruby exe file so just click on this just select this click on open and here we can see all the ruby libraries are integrated click on ok ok now we have integrated our ruby with eclipse so installation steps was first to install ruby plugin on eclipse and then integrate ruby with the eclipse so plugin is giving the option only like we are getting here these options like create a ruby project module class so these options are given by the ruby plugin which we have installed here on the eclipse but to execute our, our ruby code we need ruby interpreter which we have set up in the previous session so we integrated that interpreter by using windows preferences ruby interpreter and here we have selected the interpreter so now whatever the code we are going to write here in ruby language will be interpreted by will be executed by this ruby interpreter so everything is done now we are ready to move and write ruby programming on eclipse for so here we have seen 
we have set up all these softwares and now we are ready to jump into the programming so that's all we have for this session thanks for watching this video welcome to the testing world in this session we need to understand ruby gem gems can be defined as a library which we are going to get in ruby for the different task if i compare it with java so we are getting jar files in that so here gems are set of files set of executable files which we are going to get for the different purpose as a library so while performing the task in the ruby we need to perform different tasks i take an example like if you want to read the data from excel sheet so to read the data from the excel sheet you need some libraries in ruby we call it gem so ruby provide lot of libraries api which can be installed and used while working with the ruby and these libraries are called ruby gem as i compared ruby gem are similar to the jar files which we are going to get in java each gem has its name version and the platform on which it can work so here i'm going to show you process how we can install gem how we can uninstall gem how we can download it so all these process i'm going to show you so first of all start command prompt and here i want to check how many gems are currently installed on my system so it means how many libraries currently i am having in my system for ruby programming language so gem list hyphen hyphen local so this is the command for fetching out all the libraries all the gems which are installed on my system so here you can see we have few gems which are installed and we can also see its version next command is how to set up a new gem so to install any gem we need to write a command like gem install and we can give name of any of the gem one of the gem is cucumber it's a bdd tool which we can integrate with ruby so i'm just installing its gem so gem install cucumber and just enter so here we see at the start installation process it will take some time because it's going to download all the files from internet so you must be connected with the internet as well so here you can see it is downloading all the files which is required for cucumber gem and everything is done it is showing like successfully installed cucumber now it's installing so after the downloading it's installing so two processes are involved over here first to download and then install it when we go for gem install it's going to download plus installation so everything is done it shows like total eight gems are related to the cucumber it has downloaded and installed now i want to check how many gems are installed on my system so gem list hyphen hyphen local so here we can see it installed cucumber related gems as well so we have seen two commands one to list all the gems which are currently installed on my system and other one is to install any gem to uninstall any gem is gem uninstall and the name of the gem so i'm writing cucumber i just enter it is asking for do you want to uninstall it yes and it is removing the cucumber so if you want to check it again so gem list hyphen hyphen local so here we can see before we have a gem which is cucumber 2.2.3 2.3.3 this one and we have uninstalled it so here we can see that particular gem is uninstalled now last command i'm going to cover is to download 
a gem we are not going to install it we are just going to download it so gem fetch cucumber so it's not going to install it it's just going to download that gem so i'm just enter and it's going to download that gem download it completed and we are not installing it as of now so we just downloaded it so here we have seen how we can install a gem how we can uninstall gem list all the gems which are installed in my system and how we can only download that gem so that's all we have for this session in which we have seen what is ruby gem how we can install uninstall download and list all the installed gems that's all we have thanks for watching this video welcome to the testing world in this session we are going to understand interactive environment for ruby so as we know that ruby is a interactive language what does it mean interactive means ruby is providing its interactive environment where we can write one line of code can execute it and see its result so to move to the Ruby interactive environment, I'm moving to the command prompt. So for that, we need to start command prompt. I'm starting the command prompt. Here we, have, we are on the command prompt. To move to the Ruby interactive environment, we can type IRB interactive Ruby and just enter. So here we can see we switch to the ruby interactive environment whatever the command we will we want to write we can write it over here and we will get the result of it so first command we are going to understand is how to print data on console so print data we have command print so we are using print hello this is ruby we just need to press enter and it will show a result so that's an interactive environment where we are writing one line of code and we are getting result of it in the same way we can use one more command this command is also used to write something on the console we will see what is the difference between print and puts in the next session but here like testing word i'm typing and just enter and here we can see it display testing word so we have seen like how we can switch to interactive environment interactive environment provide us opportunity to write one line of code and get a result of it here we can see we are writing one line of code and getting result of it so that's the interactive environment where we can write any line of code and here we can see if you want to perform some calculation you can just write it like 2 plus 5 3 into 7 so whatever the calculation you want to perform you can write it directly interactive environment will perform the calculation and will give result of it that was the interactive environment of ruby if you want to come out from the interactive environment command is quit just write quit and enter and here we can see we came out from the interactive environment so in this session we have seen how we can switch to the interactive environment we can write one line of code and get result of it and at the end come out from the interactive environment so that's all we have for ruby interactive environment session thanks for watching this video welcome to the testing world in this session we are going to perform ruby programming on notepad so these are the steps that we need to perform first open notepad write ruby code then save the code with the rb extension and then execute it from the command prompt
So first of all, I'm starting a notepad, this one. So here we can write Ruby programming code. So I'm going to use very simple statement print. This is start of programming. And one more line I'm going to use is print. This is end of programming. Print command is used to print something on the console and it's not going to change line. So if you want to change the line as well, so I'm going to use ports. Ports is going to write something on the console and it will change the line as well. So this will display on the first line, then it will change the line and then second line will be displayed. So print is to put something on the console without changing line. Put write something on the console. After that, it changes the line. I'm going to save this you can save it anywhere I'm saving in my folder with the name Ruby code you can give any name to the file I'm giving like code 1 extension must always be RB so I have mentioned code 1 dot RB I'm just saving it so I'm going to that file And here we can see it is adding .txt at the end but my extension should always be only RB so I'm removing .txt from here so my code is saved in the .rb format which is a Ruby format now we want to execute this code to execute this code copy this location open command prompt from the command prompt move to that location so I move to that location where dot RB file is placed now here write Ruby and the file name was code one dot RB and just enter so here we can see both the lines are executed means file is executed and we are getting result on the console so this is the way we, we can write code in notepad file we can save it with dot rb extension and we can execute it from the command prompt so these are the steps we have performed that's all we have for this session here we have seen how we can execute the code which is written in dot rb extension file that's all we have thanks for watching this video in this session we are going to start programming we are going to use Eclipse as the editor for the same so first of all I am here on Eclipse so we have already set up Eclipse and we have already installed Ruby plugin so first of all here I am going to create a Ruby project so file new and I am going to select a Ruby project over here so that's a Ruby and it's a, a Ruby project whatever the name you want to give you can give it over here so I am giving Ruby testing one more thing you need to view over here whenever we are working on a Ruby on Eclipse Ruby interpreter must be configured in the Eclipse we have already shown in the last class but I am going to show you again like here it shows default config uh, interpreter is not configured so just click on the configure interpreter and here go to the add browse and to the location where ruby is installed so on my system on this location we have ruby installed inside the bin ruby.exe so I select it just ok so now Ruby interpreter is configured on the Eclipse we are ready to write code in the Ruby programming language I click on finish so a new Ruby project will be created so here we can see a new Ruby project with the name Ruby testing is created over here when we work on the Ruby so it 
ask for switching in to the Ruby perspective. Perspective means a layout which is especially designed for the Ruby programming. So it is asking like do you want to switch over there? I am saying yes I want to switch. So now we have a Ruby perspective. Here we can check this is the Ruby perspective. We already have the Ruby project over here. So as of now we have created a Ruby project. Now to write code go to the Ruby project right click select new and then we can select empty Ruby script. So as of now we are not creating Ruby class module we are just going for the empty Ruby script. So whatever the name you want to give I am giving like a1 and you can see our Ruby file is created with the name a1. Whatever the code we want to write in Ruby programming, we can write it over here. So moving to the programming. So first of all, we want to write something on the console. To write something on the console, we can use either puts or print. Puts is used to write something on the console and then line switch. Print will write something on the console, but no line switch. So I'm going to show you like puts this is line 1 and line switch and here print this is line 2 with no line switch after that I'm writing print hello so these are the three lines I want to print on the console few things that we need to notice like here we can directly write Ruby programming here we need to create a classes Ruby support object oriented programming which we are going to do the classes and other oops concept in Ruby we can also do programming without using oops concept so here we are just writing direct Ruby script. We are not going for the oops concept. One more thing you need to notice over here that we are not writing semicolon at the end of the line. So we need not to write semicolon at the end of the line. Also when you want to use any method like put sprint. So using the brackets is not mandatory. If you use that that's fine. If you don't use that again it's fine. I'm just going to execute this so this is my run button and here you see it asks for the Ruby script or the Ruby test I want to execute it as a Ruby script so I'm executing and now we are getting results so let's understand this result first this puts is working so this is line one and line switch means control is on the second line now now we are printing something this is line 2 with no line switch so this is my second line because it's not line switch so control is still the second line and now I'm writing print hello so it is writing the hello on the same line. So we have seen how we can write a simple code in Ruby programming language. We just use print and puts as of now which both are used for writing something on the console put will put the line and line switch print will print the line with no line switch to execute this this is the run button we just click on this we need to select ruby script as of now so that's the first program in the ruby programming language that we have written here we have gone through only two keywords one is put and other is print so we have seen how we can write something on the console now i'm moving to the second topic which is comments so how to make comments in ruby we have two type of comments single line comment and multiple line comment. If, so if you want to make single line comment hash is used for the single line comment. So here you can see I just placed hash in the front of the line and the line is turned to green color means it become comment. If I am executing this so you will see only second and third line is executing first line is a comment line. We can make multiple line comments as well. So if you want to make multiple line comments, 
in Ruby, multiple line comments started with the equal 